Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. Hey everyone, it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. I don't know why I'm in a good mood today. You are in a good mood though. You know, You're when I singing songs, humming to yourself. I had one of those days where like everything around me collapsed yesterday, and it was kind of like at the end of the yes. day, I go, what? Wait, a, what happened today? You know, we had a nice phone call last night. Yeah. You called me, and like it was like a debrief of Heather Abraham's day, and it really was like. Oh my gosh, and then that happened? And, and then, then this that happened, happened, and then that. They were, I swear, most of it was out of my control. Yeah, and sometimes things like that just happen. And you know what? You just need to. Well, and it was so nice to talk to you because you said, tomorrow is a new day. So it, I woke up and I said, it, you know what? It is a new day today, and I'm going to tackle it. There you go. So we've been wrestling all day, and I think I've gotten a hold of it. <laughs> we're having a good day. I think you are having a good day. And we're going to start with a question. And that is, is it time to retire blue jeans? I make notes on my papers for all the topics. Uh -huh. And the blue, retire blue jeans, question mark? So this came from what? a Washington Post article. And it's about, so everybody, you know, so many people working from home now. Mm -hmm. So they were on Zoom calls and everything. So professional tops. People are still buying those shirts yeah. and blouses and all right. that kind of stuff. But on the bottom, they're wearing something even more relaxing than blue jeans. They're wearing maybe something more comfortable. Maybe they're wearing pajama pants. Maybe they're wearing leggings. Maybe they're wearing sweatpants. I'm not judging. And so now people are saying, I'm not going back to blue jeans. Why did we constrict ourselves in these blue jeans? But do you find them to be, I feel like you're not wearing the right jeans if you find them to be constrictive. Or more constricting. Than, constricting. More <laughs> often than not, I have to kind of. Well, then, you know. yeah. I'm sorry, my IFB. I have to keep oh. pinching it. I'm having, that's Things the only fall. bad thing that's happening today. If IFB that's it, problems. we're going to be okay. Right. I'll let, it, I'll let you know what Jill says. I have <laughs> a pair of mom jeans that I love. Mm -hmm. And they're high waisted, they're comfortable, they hit me at the right place on the ankle. I love everything about them. I still wear my blue jeans, and I say, no, it is not time to retire them. All right, Heather Abraham has weighed in on this subject, but apparently sales are up for leggings and sweatpants and, and basketball shorts. Athleisure wear. Yes, athleisure wear. And listen to this. Uh, there's several jean companies that have declared bankruptcy, including True Religion, Lucky Brand, uh, some others too. Yeah. So not such a good sign for blue jeans. I watched a Netflix like little mini docu series on uh, you know how we got to this whole athleisure wear thing and it's actually do you remember track suits like that's when it started right. to become big and it's just kind of evolved to like where we are now. Like from the 70s track suits? Yeah, and then yeah. you know you had the neons that came in, leggings, right. all that stuff. So it's and kind now of it's just made blossomed. Yeah, and now we can wear our very expensive yoga wear out and we look put together. And we're comfortable, right? <laughs> right. I mean, people are comfortable yeah. in that. That's kind of the, the key to the whole thing. Yeah, you don't necessarily look sloppy. Remember when you used to get dressed up to go to the airport? It's like a big what? thing. If you were to flying, go to the airport. yeah, you didn't. But now, if you go yeah. to the airport, it's like, oh, just wear your sweatpants. Well, you, you know, know what? I can remember flying because uh, there was one time out of the year that I would fly back to Syracuse. I went to school in Syracuse, and I can remember having a sport coat as a college student. But I think I was. An abnormal college student, because <laughs> I don't think most would have a sport coat. I don't know why I was wearing a sport coat. Anyhow. Because you were born in a suit, and we yes. all know this to be true, right. Mr. GQ. All right, so yesterday, Heather was drinking pumpkin spice coffee because she Ready. was, you want to usher in fall, you want to usher in 2021. Yep. And then someone responded with this picture. And we love this picture. So forget NyQuil. At this point, we need year quill, hibernate <laughs> version. So someone created this. This is not real, but we thought it was kind of fun. End 2020 fast, just sleep through the entire year. And then way at the bottom in the little small print, it says, and I'm sure. Like a caution? 2021 could be worse. And no, it's not going to be. I'm going to tell I you just, right now. I just. Yeah. Oh no, it's going to be much better. It has to be. So we need to get yeah. one of our psychic friends to come on the show and tell us when this is going to be over. Can we arrange that? <laughs> I don't know, Jill. Can we arrange that? Um, what, oh, they are. Yeah, they already know that we want them. Is what Jill so said. So we will see them soon, <laughs> right? Because they will know. They're just going to show up. 
Um, so a lot of people are having fun with uh, their fashion as we are trying to navigate this whole thing. We're talking about getting rid of jeans, right? Mm -hmm. So someone commissioned a very expensive face mask of all things. This is like uber expensive. Uber expensive. In fact, yeah. that was one Holy of the things. Holy cow, I had not seen it until now. This, that was one of the, 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 there were three criteria, and one of them was that it had to be the most expensive face mask in the world. Wow. Well, it's being made by a company in Israel. It is made of 18 karat white gold encrusted with 3,600 white and black diamonds. The cost, one and a half million dollars. Holy cow. I mean, I, I, look, uh, if they want to spend their money that way, that, that's fine. But Could you just, imagine being able to spend that much on a face well, mask? And I'm hoping, you know, you're not gonna, we're not going to need face masks for all that much longer. I hope, I hope, I hope. We just, so... That's then what do you do with it? I, I guess you turn it into a hat. Well, you know, you do. We were talking about this yesterday about having stories to tell one day, and maybe that's part of the story hundreds of years from now. Yeah. I Something don't know. more affordable is maybe owning your own diner. I, and it could happen. It's up for sale on eBay, of all places, which I don't understand. Um, but $15,000 for this old diner. Obviously, you're going to put a lot more than $15,000 into it if you can yes, see some of the you're images have to here. Fix it up, yeah. But it's bounced around a couple different spots in southwestern Pennsylvania. So it has history in the area. Right. It's along Route 422 in Summit Township. It was known as the Summit Diner. I remember, I don't remember eating there. I remember being in the parking lot and we met someone there for a story or something. So, I mean, I remember exactly where this is, but uh, some people are saying it could cost 30000 just to move it, and they want you to move it if you buy it. Yeah. Uh, so you have to restore it. But over the years, it was on Penn Avenue in Pittsburgh at one point. It was on Baum Boulevard in Pittsburgh. So it's just one of those. It looks like some of the other diners that still exist. And, you know, I think people have good memories from that kind of stuff. I know. You know what? Actually, when I saw the picture of it, I thought, wait, is that the... I thought it was the old tin diner that used to be on Route 8 in Hampton Township. I, I don't know if you ever were at the Venus Diner. The Venus Diner, yes. yes. But I had uh, friends on Facebook who commented and weighed in on this because I could not remember the name, and it is not the same diner. In fact, that one traveled all the way to Minneapolis. Oh, and so now, really, they could move. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, hey, if you're in the market for a diner, you heard it here first. Go to eBay, $15,000, and then... Some more <laughs> after that. Maybe a bit more on top <laughs> of more. that. Uh, well, someone didn't have to pay anything for this next little oh, place. Some people are so lucky. Not, not that I'm jealous. I'm not. I'm happy for them. But do you remember? <laughs> didn't sound very happy, <laughs> did I? So Beautiful. Selena Pompietti gave us a tour of this amazing place. It's the HGTV Smart House. And this time around, they built it in a suburb of Pittsburgh. So we learned about this back in April. So well, pretty. they had this contest to give it away. And a woman has won this. She's a woman from California. Uh, her name is Jill. Spelled differently than our Jill, but uh, Jill Doubleday. In addition to the house with all the smart home features, and I mean, they did this up yes. you know, to show it off on HGTV Ceilings. and everything. Yeah, everything. She also gets a Mercedes of some sort. I, I just don't know. Do you think that she's going to move from California into this home, or does she sell it? I wonder if there's some sort of contractual agreement that you can't Have to sell live it. In it. You know, and yeah, or so rent long. it out or something. Right. No, no you. It's need, a beautiful it's home. It's so gorgeous, Jill. If you don't want it. Call, we'll take it. Call us. We will take it. We'll, we'll at least stay there until you want to come visit. That's right. Yeah. Well, speaking of contests, how about free pizza for a year? Pizza Fridays? Uh, yeah, it would this totally would be, change our lives. It really would. It? would. Uh, Caliente Pizza and Draft House, they're holding a concert, and this is for free pizza for a year. They're going to award eight winners to celebrate their eighth anniversary. They've made a lot of headlines. They win a lot of competitions yeah. for their pizza, and they've actually grown a lot. They started in Bloomfield. They now have locations in Hampton, Mount Lebanon, Aspenwall, Monroeville. Monroeville one is the most recent of their locations. Oh, there's John, John Delano. John Delano eating pizza. <laughs> uh, I don't know that we've you added this. You never know what you're going to see in this video. <laughs> we may have. I wonder if they've been on our Pizza Friday list. I feel like we just got pizza from there not too long ago. Oh, really? If Frankie's watching, maybe he'll text me. But I think that they were on our list recently. Yeah, well, hey, they've gotten worldwide acclaim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can enter right now. Uh, the contest runs until September 26th, and then they will choose eight winners at random. Free pizza for a year. So that is a so cool wonderful. idea. And it's making me hungry. Today, I've been thinking a lot about my little sunny bunny because today is National Middle Child Day. And I am still trying to figure out what middle child syndrome looks like.
So do you think you're seeing signs of it well, showing I don't up know. in Sunny? I, I think I, Sunny is adorable. She is adorable. But there's, there is a thing, the syndrome, and I don't really know how to prevent it. So I feel like I'm constantly working overtime so that she's not the forgotten one. Oh, no. You know? No. Well, you know what? What I have always read, I mean, I'm not an expert on this. I'm an only child, and I have no children. Uh, however, uh, I have heard that middle children are sort of the peacekeepers, mm -hmm. the ones who grow up in the world to bring people together. To maybe, maybe she'll become like Secretary of State, and she can negotiate, you know, foreign lands, agreeing that on that. That could be. But I've also heard that they maybe are perceived by some to be peacekeepers, but secretly then stir in the pot a little bit. Oh. That they're the ones that are actually causing the trouble and, do you and the see controversy. That at this point? I don't know yet. I mean, she's still just like you know, a little three-year-old, outgoing, laughing, right. saying funny words. You know. All right. Well, keep us keep us posted. We'll check in and through find the out, years and find, find out. out how the middle child thing is going. <laughs> uh, and before we run out of time, we want to mention one more holiday, um, and it is for Jello. It is National Eat Your Jello Day. Uh, which was trademarked in 1897, and I didn't know this. There are 21 different flavors of like Jello. Jello is a tough thing. We recently bought Jello for our kids, and if they, the first time they try Jello, they don't really know what to do with it. it well, it's it. a tough consistency, though. You don't, oh. you're not expecting it, so they all gags on it. Oh, they weren't really? expecting it. Yeah. See, I. I can remember my mom would make raspberry jello and cut up apples and put Cool Whip on the top. So <gasps> sweet. Oh, so good. Yeah. And it's strawberry pretzel salad. That's wonderful too. Pittsburgh staple. Oh, yep. Yeah. So enjoy the jello today. And shout out to all the middle children. <laughs> help me. First. Yes. Please help. <laughs> Okay, it is time for a break because we have a lot coming up on this show for you today. Uh, one of the stories is about a local guy who travels back and forth from Pittsburgh to Hollywood to make some pretty spectacular TV. You may not know his name, but you know the shows he's helped create, like Seinfeld and Will and Grace, just to name two. Well, now he's back to work on a new sitcom in the middle of the pandemic, and he's going to tell us about the pretty daunting challenges he faces and what TV may look like this fall. I've been looking forward to this report since you told me about it. We are also going to look at how to make your home into a classroom, what you need to create learning spaces for your kids if they'll be learning online this year. Plus, cooking with Rainya, get not one, but two recipes Ooh. for refreshing summer salads. Two for the price of one, and the price is free. So this is a <laughs> great deal, people. <laughs> and much more all ahead on this August 12, 2020, National Eat Your Jello Day, National Middle Child Day. Just take your pick, or we could just call it Wednesday. Thanks That's for true, watching. too. We'll be right back.